T-92 is a light tank in the USA Tech Tree that has quite an unusual shape. It's flat, because it was flattered. Low profile allows it to hide behind very small hills. Additionally, its silhouette is not so easily recognizable, so it can be quite hard to notice when stationary, especially with a bunch of bushes on top. In this video, I will review all tank features and tell you in what circumstances and how I would advise you to use it. T-92 has a relatively small cannon for its battle rating. Its caliber is 76 mm, which significantly limits the firepower. It can use four types of rounds, three of them are designed to penetrate armor, two of them have good penetration values, and these two rounds have one thing in common. They deal very little post-penetration damage. Despite the impression you might have by looking at the clips in this video, one-shots are quite rare. Most of the time these happen only if the opponent was already damaged before and has some missing bolts and crew members, or ammunition rack detonates. Otherwise, I usually had to hit opponents multiple times to knock out all crew members which might take a while if that's a big tank with crew members all over the place. Regarding the penetration, APDS and HEAT-FS share somewhat similar values. They can go through around 250 mm of armor, which is not bad, a tank 6.7 battle rating. But some heavy tanks, such as Mouse or Soviet heavies, might not be penetratable in the areas where you could do the most damage. Both of these rounds have above average muzzle velocity of over 1000 meters per second, which makes it simple to hit distant opponents. It's especially useful considering that this vehicle, just like most vehicles at this battle rating, doesn't have rangefinder. I was mainly using heat FS rounds and would recommend everyone to research them ASAP, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it penetrates the most sloped armor. Because in order to do the most damage, you might want to hit the center of the tank, which is almost always a sloped plate. And the second reason is that it has a similar amount of explosives to high explosive rounds, so you don't need to worry about carrying and switching to another type of round for squishy vehicles. Nevertheless, I still kept some APDS rounds for situations when I might want to shoot through bushes and walls. Little amount of post-penetration damage is somewhat compensated by reload that can be as short as 5 seconds with aced crew. Couple of hits, even low damaging ones, usually enough to cripple the opponent's tank for a longer time, allowing you to finish off the remaining crew members easily. When rounds are flying the opposite way, from opponents, into you, everything ends up faster. Armor plates vary from around 12 to 32 mm. It won't protect the vehicle from anything more serious than high caliber machine guns. Additionally, there are four crew members. Three of them at the right side of the tank are just asking to be knocked out all at once. So the probability of being one shot at is high. But at the same time, if you survived a hit somehow, Knocked out gunner is not a problem, since the commander can fire the main cannon as well. It's a nice feature that saved me a couple of times, though I wouldn't say that it becomes useful often, because often T-92 gets one-shotted. This vehicle has the usual for USA tanks gun depression of 10 degrees, that allows you to play hull down. But keep in mind that there is a driver's hatch which limits the cannon's angles in that area. Turret rotation is 24 degrees per second, faster than average, but nothing too impressive. Despite the fact that the T-92 is a light tank and is expected to be more mobile, I wouldn't say that it's very fast. The biggest difference from other vehicles is felt mostly when accelerating because T-92 reaches the speed of 40 kph of road very quickly, even on sand or snow. Additionally, this vehicle can benefit from its higher than average maximum speed limit of 57 kph, 
which by the way is reachable even on flat terrain, but only if driving on roads. At the same time you have to keep in mind that for example Soviet medium tanks at similar battle rating may have even bigger maximum speed limit, so the speed advantage is not something you can count on. It's still nice to have good acceleration, but it doesn't affect the gameplay too much. Unfortunately, this tank has only one reverse gear, which limits the speed to only 8 kph when moving backwards. It's a somewhat acceptable value, but considering that even the heavy tanks can reverse faster, it's definitely disappointing to move that slow with a light tank that in general is expected to be more mobile. The tank has three machine guns. Two of them have their own little turrets and one of them is high caliber. Considering that there are almost no trucks at vehicles battle rating, low caliber MGs are usually useless. They cannot penetrate even other light tanks. And a high caliber one in theory can deal with Italian cars and quickly destroy tanks' tracks, but the situations when that could be useful doesn't happen often. When it comes to aircraft, the firepower of three machine guns is useful, but only if you are being attacked. Otherwise, I think it's smarter to avoid using machine guns because they will attract planes' attention, which might be too persistent for tanks' roof armor to handle. In arcade, the tank doesn't feel good. It's one of those tanks that has no armor or high damaging rounds. So there is nothing to do in arcade apart from scouting everything around on cooldown, occasionally landing a critical hit, and being a magnet for enemy planes. Machine guns are helpful in this case, since you can hit incoming planes and get rewards when they crash. But trying to survive plane attacks is not the most fun gameplay. On maps with little to no obstacles, I would still be using Heat FS, but considering that you can see enemy tags through bushes and walls in this game mode, I would recommend carrying more APDS rounds than in realistic. But in general, I would recommend switching to another tank that would be more suitable for arcade. Despite the T-92 being flat and able to hide behind low obstacles, it is still as wide as most of the tanks, so I wouldn't call it small. Rounds deal a little amount of damage and when up to it, even penetration of heat FS shells that are one of the most penetrating ammunition types in game might not be enough for some heavy tanks. On a good note, the reload speed is fast and good muzzle velocity is helpful when fighting distant opponents. So the firepower is not that bad, it just might take a while to destroy something. I would rate this tank 4 pancakes on a tank out of 10. It's a normal light tank with an unusually flat turret. I would use this vehicle because of its acceleration, being relatively resistant to being up tiered thanks to heat FS rounds, or if I'm going to cross a big flat surface, such as dunes, where I could benefit from a low tank's profile. <laughs>